In this video, I'm going to teach you a process that can help you improve your walking. And as I do so, I'm going to take you inside the learning process. So this is also going to be a bit of a demonstration of how does the Feldenkrais method work. It's not just the movements you do, although of course the movements are important, but there's a pretty special learning process that's going on here. And I'd like to help you see it because it might help you, generally speaking, with Feldenkrais practice, which is a unique way of working with the body and the mind to improve your movement. And what we're going to see in the course of what we'll do today is that you're also working with your psychology, you're working with your emotions, and you're very much working with your attention. Hi, my name is Seth Dellinger. I'm a Feldenkrais practitioner in Washington, D.C. I love to help my clients to improve their posture, their movement, their breathing, and their overall sense of well-being. And if you'd like my individual support, I'd be happy to do that with you. Just check the link below the video where you can book a free call with me. So today we're going to be improving walking. And the way we're gonna do it is we're just gonna simply take a tiny little fragment of the walking pattern and get to know it better. And the fragment we're gonna work with is the flexion and extension of your angle. So every time you take a step, you're going to flex and extend your ankle, right? And what we're gonna do is not a whole lot more than flexing and extending the ankle, but what you'll see as we go through this is there is a lot to uncover in that simple movement. So we're gonna slow it way down and the reason we do that is so that we can, first of all, reduce the effort that we're using. That's the overall goal, is to make this more effortless. And then by slowing it down, we can also really zero in on details that we would rarely be aware of. Those details are gonna help us get a richer image of the movement. And so what I'm talking about here is, if you flex and extend your ankles and you were to close your eyes, you can probably sort of get a basic picture in your brain of what you're doing. You could visualize it. But how much detail do you have? And what I think you're going to see in this process is the more detailed and rich the picture you have of this simple movement, the more that it's going to feel easier and it's going to function better for you. So before we begin, I'll just tell you, I'm going to sit in this chair so that I can talk to you at the camera, but you could do this lying on your back and when you lie on your back you could either just keep your heel on the floor and lift and lower your foot which is going to create the flexion movement or you could lift your foot up off the floor and maybe hold behind the knees with your your fingers interlaced like this and you can flex and extend the ankle like that and you can also do this lying on your belly so you can lie on your belly, bend your knee so that you have the, uh, the sole of the foot to the ceiling, and then you can do these movements like that. And first of all, I mentioned these different positions because one might be more comfortable for you. But there are also three different relationships to gravity and three different spatial relationships for your brain to make sense of as you're doing it. In fact, it could be valuable to try this particular process in more than one of these positions to really fill out, as I was saying, the image of the movement. Okay, so once you've figured out which position you're going to follow along in, we'll just begin with that simple movement. Slowly flexing and extending the ankle. And really take your time with this. I'm going to give you some time because the value of what we're doing is not in the repetition. It's in what we're gonna to begin to notice. So you really wanna make sure the movements feel smooth and easy. If there's any discomfort, stop. You can always just rest at any time. There's gonna be a fair amount of repetition, so please take rests as you need them. But also, we're not interested in going into strain, so you don't have to make the biggest possible movement that you can. Just make a movement where you know that you are opening the front of your ankle and closing it. Okay. And one of the things that we're gonna do 
is, is just make variations with how we pay attention. So as I said, think of the front of your ankle right now. It's opening when you extend and when you flex the foot and you bring the top of the foot towards your shin, of course it's closing. So just feel that opening and closing at the bottom of your shin, in the front of your ankle. Okay, and you might want to pause for a moment, but now we're just going to do the same thing and I'm going to ask you to bring your attention to the back where the Achilles tendon is and just feel how it lengthens and shortens. So you could think of the back of the ankle joint as opening and closing. And of course it's opening in the front as it closes in the back. So as you keep going, again, go small, take your time. Just notice it might be a slightly different feeling if you pay attention to the front of the ankle or if you pay attention to the back. And then maybe at a certain point you can notice both the front and the back. Okay, we're going to pause again, but we're going to keep doing nothing more than flexing and extending for a little while. But just see if what you've done so far, if there's, there's a different feeling, maybe in the ankle or maybe more generally in your leg. You can rest with your legs long if you're lying on your back between the movements or you can keep your feet standing. Doesn't really matter, but the rests are also an opportunity to feel if something's changed. Okay, so as we go back to the movement, just notice where does your attention go naturally? And a lot of people will say the front of the foot. So you can sort of notice how the front of your foot is going towards your shin and away or towards the floor and away, right? Notice, can you pay attention to the heel? Think of this as lengthening the heel away from the back of the knee and then pulling it up towards the back of the knee. It's still the same movement, but you might not be so used to paying attention to the heel. All right. So the only variations we've done so far is in how you're paying attention. But if you make the movement, closing your eyes, can you, can you feel those different places? Can you sort of sense those different places? Does the movement feel any smoother than when we began? Okay, so let's look at the ankle joint on the skeleton for a moment. And what I wanna show you is while it's easy to think of this joint as a hinge that just opens and closes, there's actually the possibility for a sliding movement, a little forward and back. So think of how it can move a little forward and then it can slide a little back. So it's like I can, as I, as I close the joint, I can pull, can pull the heel a little backwards. It's a tiny amount but it's there. So this surface here, it's, it's sliding. It's not just simply hinging. And when we begin to feel that movement, when we begin to imagine that the opening and closing has a little bit of a forward and back to it, that is very important to finding a smoother movement of flexion and extension. Okay, so now that we've had a chance to look at the skeleton, we're gonna come back to this movement of flexing and extending the ankle. But now we know that it's not just a hinge that's opening and closing, but there's a sense of this slight sliding forward and back that's taking place. So let's just see if we can feel that. So again, as I as I extend my ankle, I can think of the heel moving forward and coming a little more under the bones of my lower leg and then sliding backwards as I flex. So you could almost imagine you were, something was pushing and pulling and pushing and pulling on your foot as you make the movements. Or 
You can just imagine here's the, here's the two condyles at the bottom of each of your, your leg bones, your tibia and your fibula on the outside. And just imagine how underneath here something is sliding along with that more obvious opening and enclosing that's taking place. But there is a sliding back and a sliding forward, and a sliding back and a sliding forward. And as you continue making the movement, just see if that sense of a glide in the ankle, it's very subtle, but if you can feel it, this might just provide a little more smoothness to the movement. If you haven't done so already, take a rest. And now we're going to look at another detail. If we look at the front of the ankle as we make these movements, again, maybe that's another view on the sliding in and out as it opens and closes, but also just look at the shape of the foot. Can you see the slope in the foot? And so as the ankle opens and closes, can you get a sense for how as it goes in and out there's a bit of an angle? So it's not that it's just going up and down in front, that there's a little bit of a diagonal that you might be able to feel as you come back to the movement. So as you flex and as you extend, your toes go towards your shin and away. But now as you do this, just notice every time you bring your foot up like this, every time you flex, is it your big toe or your pinky toe? that's coming closer. For me, it's definitely the big toe. So do the movement a few times and just think that you're bringing your big toe towards the shin. You don't have to change anything, but pay attention to the big toe okay? and see what that feels like. And then as you continue, pay attention to the pinky toe. Think I'm bringing my pinky toe towards my shin. Just notice if it feels like you're doing the movement slightly differently. Okay, same thing when you extend, which toe goes further away? I'm noticing that my pinky is a little further down than the big toe. And so again, on the, on the movement of extension, you could think of the big toe or the little toe and just notice if you do it differently. And of course, there's a reason for this. So you can see that the foot, the top of the foot, right, you can see it has, has this slope to it. And what we're going to see now is that the movement of the ankle, it has a slight angle to it. Your foot isn't just exactly parallel like this, but there's a little angle in it. So if you extend, if you extend, you'll notice it's easier to open the outside of your ankle. And then as you close, you're getting more closure on the sort of, if you think of the front of the ankle, you're getting a little more closure on the inside. So if you want, you could maybe, if you can get your hand to your foot, you just as you open and close the ankle, just feel what's happening along the outside, what's happening along the inside. And what you might see is that there is a slight rotation going on in the foot underneath the lower leg. And so does that help you as you think of that sliding movement to even imagine a little bit of an angle in the foot as the ankle slides in the joint? None of this has to be perfect. None of it has to be figured out completely, but just notice if you're getting more clarity in the ankle as we go along. Now, as I mentioned before, what we're always after when we do Feldenkrais processes is how can we reduce the effort? How can we eliminate unnecessary efforts? So let's notice another thing that might be happening for you. 
as you flex and extend the ankle, are you doing something with your toes? Now, I'm going to suggest you don't need to do anything with your toes, but what you might notice is that there's a tendency to curl your toes or to lift your toes. As you go along, you might be doing something in the joints that connect your toes to the front of your foot, even though all you've been trying to do is open and close the ankle. So just notice that, and first of all, see, can you let the toes just be quiet? But maybe you find you're just compelled to make little movements of the toes. Okay, so let's see if we can play with that. I'm just going to start with the example that maybe you're lifting your toes as you're flexing like this. So the foot is coming up and the toes are coming up as well. So let's, let's just feel the movement of the toes separately first. So lifting, lifting, right? I'm holding my foot. You don't necessarily have to hold your foot, but you're trying to not really do anything in your ankle. And actually, you can maybe see that I am doing a small movement in my ankle. It's really hard to separate these things out. And then I can curl the toes as well. I can lift the toes and curl them under. And this actually changes the whole shape of my foot. But I'm mainly just doing the movements of the toes now so I can feel how those are different than the movement of the ankle. And then I might just go back to flexing and extending, asking my toes not to do anything because they just had an opportunity. And now I'm just asking them to rest. Okay, and you can take a complete rest for a moment or two. But now we're going to go back into this question of can we separate them? And at first we're not going to try. We're actually going to add on purpose that when we we flex, we're going to lift the toes, and when we extend, we're going to curl the toes. So the foot goes up, the toes go up, the foot goes down, and the toes go down. And just feel, now that you're doing that deliberately, that this is, this is adding a little more work, adding a little more muscular engagement. But you might have been doing this already, despite yourself, without really realizing it. So now we're exaggerating that. And the way I'm doing it right now, this is the combination that most people tend to do. But there is another combination. So first, take a rest. Notice if something's feeling a little different. My whole right leg at this point feels different than my left leg. And we've mainly been focused down at the ankle. But I can feel it all the way up into the hip joint. OK, so here, instead, this time we're going to extend the foot but lift the toes and then flex the foot but curl the toes. Now I've practiced this quite a bit and I won't say it's easy but I'm used to, to doing this. But just notice this variation tends to really mess people up. It might just feel like you can't do it. So. If you're having difficulty, just stop, pause, and see if you can laugh at yourself a little bit. This is where the emotional feelings come in, because if you're getting frustrated right now, what you'll probably do is speed up. It'll be harder to pay attention to what you're doing, and you'll just tie yourself in knots. So make it playful. Be, be, be willing to laugh at yourself, <laughs> okay? So now, Again, just give it a try. Maybe slow it way down. And if you make mistakes, that's fine. That's fine. And just notice it might feel weird. It might feel not that satisfying, right? It might just feel awkward. But can you just breathe? Right? Really notice your breathing in and out as you do this. Because if it does feel unfamiliar, you could be holding your breath right now. You could be tensing in many places. Uh, I just messed it up. <laughs> okay, so again, take a break. Now I'm just gonna show you a couple other variations that you can play with. And each of these variations 
is just offering something new to your brain. It's really not so important that you master them all. And you can practice with them another day as well, right? But let's just curl the toes and keep, keep them curled, right? But now flex and extend the ankle. That might feel a little less complicated in the brain, but when you do this movement, that's, that's one of the movements we were looking for before. Now, you could also get a cramp in your foot. <laughs> I should say that. If that happens, just stop, shake it out, do whatever you need to do, okay? Take a little break, and then, of course, the other thing you can do is lift your toes and keep them lifted as you flex and extend the ankle. Okay, and then perhaps after trying that, you could go back to see if you can find this combination of lifting the toes as you extend the foot and then curling the toes as you flex the foot. Sometimes I use a little image here for this. Let's say you threw a marble to me and I wanted to catch it with my foot. Well, I'd have to lift my foot up and curl the toes and I would catch the marble right? Catch. I catch the marble. Or imagine that you are driving and you want to step on the gas. You would probably lift, or I'm sorry, you would push down, right? But if your toes were still on, on the gas pedal, they would, they would, relative to the rest of the foot, they would be lifting up, wouldn't they? And also just remember when you're walking, there's that moment where you lift the back heel and the toes are still, still in that position, right, relative to the foot. So this is actually part of the pattern of walking. Okay, but now we're gonna forget about the toes, we're gonna forget about all of those kind of funny variations, and just see now that you've done all those different things with the toes, if you leave them out, are they more willing to just be quiet as you just flex and extend the ankle? All right, so what have we done here? We just took a little piece of walking, flexing extended, we started to really study the movement, we started to notice it from different angles, then we noticed some of the more the details about the sliding movement in the joint and the fact that there's a little bit of a diagonal through the foot as we move, and then in order to eliminate the unnecessary movements of the toes, we played with different variations, right? None of this was about achievement. None of this was about force. But what we needed to do more than once was to kind of deal with some uncomfortable sensations in the body. And maybe the voice in the head had something to say about, am I any good if I can do this or if I can't do this, what does that mean about me, right? So that's all part of the learning process. But now you're done. Just go ahead and get up and walk and see how does that ankle feel? How does it compare to the other ankle? And if you do feel a smoother movement in your ankle as you walk, does it change the overall pattern of your walking? Now, of course, you did this on one side, so you might really feel a pronounced difference between the two sides, but of course, you can apply this process on the second side as well. So I hope this was helpful to you both in your walking and to help understand better the process that we use in awareness through movement, which is how we practice movement in the Feldenkrais Method. Again, if you'd like any personal guidance from me, I'd love to talk to you about that. You can book a call at the link below this video. I'll be making more videos soon, so I hope to see you then. Take care.